Francis has asked us to offer our sacrifices and prayers at this time for the people of the Ukraine, for peace and protection for the people there, for an end to war and violence. Let us gather our prayers and hearts together as we pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. In the Gospel today, the devil tempts Jesus to abuse his power as the Son of God. Jesus refuses to give in to the temptations. Let us ask God to pardon us for the times when we have given in to temptation and fallen into sin. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us Forgive us all our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that through the yearly observances of Holy Lent, that we may grow in understanding of the riches hidden in Christ, and by worthy conduct pursue their effects. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to the people, saying, The priest shall receive the basket from you and set aside in front of the altar of the Lord your God. Then you shall declare before the Lord your God, My father was a wandering Ramenan who went down to Egypt with a small household and lived there as an alien. But there he became a nation, great, strong, and numerous. When the Egyptians maltreated and oppressed us, imposing hard labor upon us, we cried to the Lord, the God of our fathers, and he heard our cry, and saw our affliction, our toil, and our oppression. He brought us out of Egypt with his strong hand and outstretched arm with terrifying power, with signs and wonders, and bringing us into this country. He gave us this land flowing with milk and honey. Therefore, I have now brought you the first fruits of the products of the soil, which you, O Lord, have given me. And having set them before the Lord your God, you shall bow down in his presence. The word of the Lord.
the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty. Say to the Lord, my refuge and fortress, my God in whom I trust. Be shall befall you, nor shall affliction come near your tent. For to his angels he has given command about you, that they guard you in all your ways. Be On their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the asp and the viper. You shall trample down the lion and the dragon. Be Because he clings to me, I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he acknowledges my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in distress. I will deliver him and glorify him. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, what does scripture say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we preach. For if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth, and so is saved. For the scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, enriching all who call upon him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory. does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Filled with the Holy Spirit, 
Jesus returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the desert for 40 days to be tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and when they were over, he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, One does not live on bread alone. Then he took him up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a single instant. The devil said to him, I shall give you all this power and glory, for it has been handed over to me, and I may give it to whomever I wish. All of this will be yours if you worship me. Jesus said to him in reply, It is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him alone shall you serve. Then he led him to Jerusalem, made him stand on the parapet of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to guard you, and with their hands they will support you, lest you dash your foot against the stone. Jesus said to him in reply, It also says, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every temptation, he departed from him for a time. The Gospel of the Lord. Jim Grant in Reader's Digest tells the story of an overweight businessman who decided that it was time to shed some pounds. He took his new diet seriously, even changing his driving route to avoid his favorite bakery. One morning, however, he showed up at work with this gigantic coffee cake. Everyone in the office scolded him for doing buying that, but his smile remained nonetheless. He said, this is a special coffee cake. I accidentally drove by the bakery this morning, and there in the window was a host of goodies. I felt it was no accident, so I prayed, Lord, if you want me to have one of these delicious coffee cakes, let there be a parking spot open right in front of the bakery. And sure enough, on the eighth time around the block, <laughs> there was an open spot. We can all relate to that, huh? Temptation is something we're all way too familiar with in this journey of life. Even Jesus himself was tempted. Following a rigorous 40-day spiritual retreat in the desert, the devil was trying to lure Jesus away from his mission, to get him to stop his mission to fulfill the Father's will of saving humanity from sin and death. The de devil tempts Jesus, and the devil tempts each of us to seek sinful pleasure, easy wealth, position of authority. Whenever we are tempted to sin, we have a choice to make. Do I follow God's will for me, or do I follow my own will? It's a question related to our identity. Am I a child of God, or do I follow the ways of the world? Jesus is our model for overcoming temptation. Now, the devil is very good at attacking where we're most vulnerable. Jesus was hungry after his desert experience, so why not turn a stone into bread? After all, Jesus would turn water into wine and multiply the loaves and fish. 
What is different here is that Jesus is being tempted to satisfy himself. The devil tempts Jesus to end his hunger pains, to stop his suffering. It's the lie that we so easily fall into. If it feels good, do it. We all have experienced desert times in our lives, times when we have felt lost, empty, unfulfilled, times we felt disconnected from God. And the devil tempts us to fill the pain, to fill the hole in the soul with whatever will help us feel better. Addictive behavior, getting lost on the internet for hours on end, overindulging in food and drink, choosing to be unfaithful to one's vocation, becoming aggressive and controlling in relationships. The devil says, by all means, stop the pain. Take care of those bodily desires. You're the one in control, not God. But Jesus says, no. The spiritual practice we can use to combat this temptation is fasting. The practice by which we tame our bodily desires, for we do not live on bread alone. The second temptation of the devil is to seek power for personal gain. His goal was to get us to reject the promise of eternal life for us to fall into pride and arrogance, thinking we are the center of the world. Sadly, we're seeing this sin unfold in the Ukraine at this time, trying to build your earthly kingdom, forgetting about our heavenly kingdom. Think about it. When you are tempted, what are you focusing on? Are you keeping your eyes on Jesus? Or does the object of your temptation have your focus and attention? Like that gigantic coffee cake the businessman purchased after circling eight times around the block. Faith teaches us we must surrender our power to God, to turn our will over to God. This is the lesson Jesus learned in the desert, keeping his eyes fixed on the Father. The spiritual practice to overcome this temptation is almsgiving, to share what you have, realizing all of us are simply stewards of God's gifts to us. The third temptation Jesus faced was ambition, the desire to amaze others, after all, he is the Son of God. The devil wanted Jesus to throw himself off the parapet of the temple so that the angels would come and break his fall, thus showing he was the Messiah. Being a miracle worker was not why Jesus came to earth. He came not to save himself, but to save us to save humanity. Jesus did not take the easy way out to prove that he was the Son of God. No, he humbled himself, took the form of a slave, accepting even death, death on the cross. The spiritual practice we can use to overcome this temptation is prayer. Because when we pray, we are humbling ourselves before God. During times of temptation, it's important to ask, where is the true source of power and authority? We cannot go it alone. We need God in our lives. Brothers and sisters, we have begun our 40-day journey in Lent, and we will be tempted like Jesus to give in to bodily desires, to seek power and control over others, 
to puff ourselves up thinking we're entitled to our blessings. Jesus came to show us the way to overcome these temptations. He was able to overcome them because he knew who he was. He knew his purpose and mission in life, fulfilling God's plan of salvation. The devil tempts us to doubt God's love, to doubt God's providence, to doubt God's power. The best way to turn away from a temptation is to keep our focus on Jesus. And so this means that we take time in Lent to really get to know Jesus, to develop our relationship with him, a relationship that nourishes and nurtures your heart, your mind, and your soul. The devil will be back to tempt us, not because we're evil, but because we're imperfect human beings. And so remember, we are never tempted beyond God's strength within us. We are never tempted beyond the strength God gives us. When you are tempted, pray, be with me, Lord, I am in trouble. And God will be with us in our distress. Cling to God and he will deliver you. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Finding life in our identity as children of God, let us now profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of a Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us, men, and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and they came man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Sisters and brothers, trust in the Spirit who leads us to light and truth, and so let us now bring our prayers before the Lord. For the Church, during this Lenten season, may the Lord strengthen us through our prayer, fasting, and almsgiving we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders and others in position of authority, that they may work for justice for all people, especially those who are maltreated or oppressed, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick, may Christ the divine physician 
bring them healing and consolation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those preparing to enter the church this Easter and their sponsors and catechists, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our society may have a greater reverence for all human life, from conception to natural death, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the young people in our parish who are discerning a vocation to religious life may feel, may feel our support and be guided in their decision making by our prayers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our men and women in uniform and those working in civilian jobs for the federal government beyond U.S. borders, give them health and stability, protect them from harm and allow them to return to loved ones whole and unshaken, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For John Zimmerman, for whom this Mass is being offered, for the names listed in the St. Monica book, and for the special intentions we hold in the silence of our own hearts. Pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the people of the Ukraine, for peace and protection, for an end to war, violence and hatred, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Gracious God, as you once heard the prayers of your beloved Son in the desert, hear our prayers and answer them according to your most holy will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our offertory hymn can be found in the ritual song hymnal number 578, Grant to Us, O Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. 
Give us the right dispositions, O Lord, we pray, to make these offerings. For with them we celebrate the beginning of this venerable time, this sacred time. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, by abstaining forty long days from earthly food, he consecrated through his fast the pattern of our Lenten observance. And by overcoming the snares of the ancient serpent, taught us to cast out the leaven of malice, so that Celebrating worthily the Paschal mystery, we might pass over at last to the eternal Paschal feast. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Song to Therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that Converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, 
he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and to drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity, and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, and Dennis, our Bishop, with all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him and with him and in him O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us share with one another a sign of Christ's peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Glory. Our communion hymn can be found in the ritual song hymnal number 567, Parce Domine. Parce Domine, Parce Populo Tu. A 
Let us pray. Renewed now with heavenly bread, by which faith is nourished, hope increased, and charity strengthened, we pray, O Lord, that we may learn to hunger for Christ, the true and living bread, and strive to live by every word which proceeds from your mouth through Christ our Lord. Amen. This afternoon at 3 o'clock at Immaculate Conception Parish, we will celebrate the rite of enrollment for our catechumens who are preparing for baptism at the Easter Vigil and welcome for our candidates. Please keep them in prayer as they begin this more intense period of preparation for the Easter mysteries. The Lord be with you. Let us bow down and pray for God's blessings. May bountiful blessings, O Lord, we pray, come down upon your people, that hope may grow in tribulation, virtue be strengthened in temptation, and eternal redemption be assured through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. The Mass has ended. Let us go forth glorifying God by our lives. Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn can be found in the ritual song hymnal number 1068, God of Mercy and Compassion. Amen.